Enceladus is the sixth moon of Saturn and one of the water rich bodies in the solar system. It is covered with ice and is just about absolutely white and a little bit of aqua in color. Underneath these kilometers of thick layers of ice, there is a warm liquid ocean throughout the whole moon which often releases a little bit of water through geysers or ice volcanoes into space. Ice volcanoes or cryovolcanoes as they're called on Enceladus shoot up so much icy watery material into space that the moon actually replenishes Saturn's E-ring with its icy plumes. The rings don't exist in the same exact configuration of smaller particles that make up the rings. These particles are almost fully just water ice with some little bits of rocky material. They range in size from micrometers to several meters and have almost their own atmosphere but negligible. This is because the ice particles are actually interacting with the sun and the UV rays from the sun break down the water molecules, releasing oxygen. So the material in the rings does actually diminish over time and needs replenishing from one source or the other. But what causes Enceladus to actually eject water into space? On Earth, we have plate tectonics where giant plates move around, collide and pull apart producing volcanoes and quakes. What about Enceladus, where the entire surface is just covered in a thick icy crust without visible tectonic plates? In this video, we'll look at what causes cryovolcanoes and what now research seems to point to about the mechanism behind this ejection of water into space on Enceladus. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. We know for sure that Enceladus does spew water and ice into space. But many astronomers actually suspect that Jupiter's moon Europa does this as well, just maybe not as frequently as Enceladus and may be observable only over millions of years. Europa and Enceladus are made of water and ice and in fact, these two are among the two big candidates for the possibility of life in the solar system along with Mars, the cloud tops of Venus and Saturn's moon Titan. Europa, which is five times bigger than Enceladus, doesn't show direct evidence of cryovolcanism but instead trapped water in its very thick 25 kilometer icy shell could also be released frequently. But this makes Saturn's moon pretty unique. Enceladus has a feature in its South Pole region called the Tiger Stripes. More than look like the stripes of a tiger, which it does in infrared, this feature actually looks like the stripes were made by the claws of a tiger. There are four stripes in the southern hemisphere that really look like nails were dug into the icy crust and drawn downward towards the south pole. They are in an area called Samarkand Salsai. The features on Enceladus are all named after characters and places in the Arabian Nights. Samarkand is the country that was ruled by Shah Zaman, who is the brother of Shahriyar, to whom the Queen Shahrazad is telling these stories. The Samarkand Salsai, Salsai meaning grooves, are located next to the Sarandi Planitia, the name for Sri Lanka in Persian in the stories. These stripes are linear depressions spaced around 35 kilometers apart and are warmer than nearby regions of the moon. These stripes are named, they are called the Damascus Salsis, Baghdad, Cairo and Alexandria Salsai. They are warm because they are fissures in the crust. In fact, Cassini's observations have shown that the highest temperature of all material as visible from space is actually within the tiger stripes in Enceladus. There have been theories for how this region formed. As Enceladus cooled after formation, a layer of water froze and expanded underneath the icy crust. And this was of course underwater. We already know that in water bodies, water freezes on the surface but underneath the temperature is warmer and water remains a liquid. So that's what happened here. The underground uh, water outermost layer started to freeze. It expanded. Where could it go? It pushed upward into the ice and cracked open the surface like a can of soda. The icy crust was ripped open at these grooves and 
the one called Baghdad first formed going all the way down to the South Pole. As the moon moves around in its orbit around Saturn, the planet's gravitational pull squeezes and stretches the moon. This causes the moon to actually be tapered towards the poles and bulge out a little bit at the equator and this underground ocean is also tugged by Saturn's gravity. As a result, the material inside the crust is constantly moving around so it can never cool enough to solidify. Saturn's gravity also flexes the sulcus itself, opening and closing it, expelling water and pushing ice back in. The expelled water falls as heavy hail or snow and settles on both sides and this started off with the Baghdad. Eventually, the ice sheet on either side of Baghdad became so heavy from all of the accumulated snow from this crevice that the ice sheet actually collapsed on both sides and cracked, creating two more sulci, the Damascus and the Cairo. This probably occurred around a million years or so after Baghdad formed. The same process was then repeated again with material from Damascus and Cairo creating the Alexandria fissure and another one, small one that hasn't fully cracked and exposed the water. This is just unofficially called the letter E. It is not named. Planetary scientists are also certain that there aren't any more ridges or sulci that are expected to form because the thickness of the ice increases as you move away from the South Pole. So more deposition of tons and tons of snow and ice is not going to crack the ice sheet anymore away from the South Pole. This is one theory for how the tiger stripes formed. There are multiple other theories. Another one states that a burst of heat from the center of the moon melted some ice and like glaciers do, the ice slid or even cascaded sideways and wrinkled up the surface. But the former theory that we discussed earlier seems to be more likely according to planetary scientists. The shape of the orbit of Enceladus also changes slightly every 100 million years or so as it goes around Saturn. When the orbit is more oval, the moon is being tugged more as it comes closer to Saturn and it is released as it moves further away. So the moon is squeezed in this process. When the orbit becomes circular, there is equal gravitational attraction from all sides, so the crust cools down. As the crust cools, the ice shelf will expand downwards, cooling further and push into the ocean. The ocean is warmer, so there's not a lot of depth that the ice can get into and this pressure can build up as the outer layers become cooler and cooler. When this pressure gets too intense, the outer ice near the southern pole cracks because the ice is thinner. But water doesn't spill or ooze out because of a leak in this region. The heating up of the water or ocean overpressure, which is almost like a shock wave or a blast wave exerting pressure to force a crack, both of these don't lead to water actually ejecting out of the surface into space. The thickness of the ice at the poles is about 5 to 14 kilometers, whereas away from the South Pole, it can be up to 20 kilometers. So geysers and cryovolcanism, these phenomena are observable only at the South Pole so far. We feel from images that there is a specific spot where water is ejected out into space or so it seems from the angles at which these are taken. But we also know that through the stripes there is water rising up in the form of a curtain instead of just coming out from a spot. So now astronomers have a couple of theories. One is that water is actually released from ice melting more than the underground ocean. We don't know. People also say that dissolved gases could cause bubbling too, just like soda, pushing the water to the surface. But there is another theory that is published in the new paper and which is also backed by a previous theory from 2016. What could instead be happening is controlled or decompression boiling where water starts to simultaneously boil when exposed to the vacuum of space. We know in higher altitudes, water's boiling point is lower. And in space, water can boil at room temperature or when decompressed because there is no pressure. But a single crack on the moon cannot produce this much water. Within the stripes, water is probably tepid or simmering 
on top of the stripes, actually it is likely to be quite misty and foggy, which could be releasing vapor. We just haven't zoomed in enough to see those details. It also isn't likely that we'll know more anytime soon. The authors of this paper that recently came out with a very alliterative name were not able to confirm the same processes on, on Europa. For the Saturnian system, the Cassini mission came to an end and at last flew by Enceladus in 2015. But now, Europa Clipper is going to launch in 2024, so we can at least hope to be able to understand Europa's thicker ice shell and ocean better, so we can then explain Enceladus.